What's going on, everybody? Welcome into another episode of the Lakers Outsiders Weekly Podcast, brought to you by UCAS Studios. I am your host, Gary Kester, here with you as always. And today I'm going to be talking about the most recent couple games for the Lakers. Last time I was on the podcast, I talked about uh, Anthony Davis dropping 50 points on Carl Anthony Towns and the Minnesota Timberwolves, uh, which at the time gave the Lakers their fourth straight win. Uh, today I'll be talking about basically the start of their road trip that they're on. Currently on a five-game road trip, they have gone 3-0, and so good start to the road trip. Uh, I'll be talking about that a little bit, um, but before... I go ahead and do that. Uh, be sure, guys, to like this video and subscribe on uh, subscribe to UCAS Studios and Lakers Outsiders on YouTube, on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, all those major podcast uh, networks, platforms. Um, and be sure to catch all of Lakers Outsiders content up on LakersOutsiders.com. You can also follow Lakers Outsiders on Instagram and on Twitter at Lakers Outsiders and like us on Facebook as well. And then you can follow me, my personal account on Twitter. That is just at Gary Kester. That's G-A-R-Y-K-E-S-T-E-R. All right, let's do, uh, let's dive into the last three games for the Lakers. The last three games, the Lakers have reeled off three straight wins uh, on the road. Um, they've been very, very, very good on the road this season and that has continued they have not lost away from staples center their one road loss this year was at the clippers i use air quotes <laughs> uh at the clippers so not really much of a road game but technically considered one but ever since then they haven't lost on the road so uh this team is i mean they're the road warriors man they they just keep re- uh, reeling off wins uh, away from Staples Center, and they're gonna uh, the next two games I'll talk about at the very end uh, at Indiana and at Milwaukee to to finish out this road trip. But those will be big tests to see if they can continue that. But so far, so good. Uh, so far, I mean, this team is just unbelievably good on the road. And um, let's talk about it. let's talk about these last three games. Um, so first, the the Orlando game, kind of a weird game. The Lakers were basically locking down Orlando defensively. Held them to nine first quarter points, and it was just kind of weird. After that point, the Lakers built a big lead, and Orlando kind of came all the way back, and it was just kind of, I don't know, the game had kind of a weird energy to it, and I don't know, the Lakers held on. They, they made the plays that they needed to down the stretch, and they they were able to get the win 96-87. to um, Kind of looking, going back to the, the box score here, not a good game for Anthony Davis offensively. Uh, he still continues to do the things that he does defensively. He's he's just so gifted on that end of the floor, and that that always shows up um, on film on the stat sheet. He had two blocks, two steals in this game. Uh, finished with 16 points, 12 boards. He did have six assists. He did have six assists. That's really really good um, when somebody else can step up and and kind of alleviate some of that pressure off of LeBron's shoulders as a playmaker. And so Davis definitely stepped up with that. LeBron led the way with 10 assists. After that, Danny Green had three. Dwight Howard had one. And that was that was it. The Lakers had 20 assists on 37 made field goals. So not great, but it's also not terrible. Um, but like I said, it was just a really, really weird game. LeBron, 25 points, 11 of 24 shooting. Um, he did have a triple-double in this game. He had 25 points, 11 boards, 10 assists. He did have six turnovers, though. The turnovers have been kind of an issue lately, and I'll talk about that more with the Miami game coming up. But um, a couple a couple different guys did, did step up and make some big plays. Uh, KCP continues to make big shots for this team. He makes timely shots for this team. Ever since he got into the starting lineup, he's been a different player than the one that we saw early in the season, and he he has stepped up. He has really, really stepped up and and – made some very timely buckets uh he's he's been pretty good defensively as well and just made some some kind of plays here and there when the team needs them and that's all you can ask that's all you can ask out of kcp i mean really he's when you look at the starting lineup I mean, he's the fourth or fifth best guy on that lineup right you've got anthony davis you got lebron as the top two obviously danny green as your third option and then you've got javel mcgee and kcp well, JaVale doesn't play a whole lot. In this game, he played 14 minutes. You know, he'll usually start the game and then just kind of, you know, plays a little bit here and there. But KCP played 31 minutes in this game. He had 15 points and uh, 5 of 10 shooting overall, but 4 of 7 from 3. If he continues to hit threes at that rate, that's a huge, huge plus for this team. He also had three steals. Also had three steals. Uh, again, if he is just a good, solid 3 and D guy, he hits open threes when they're presented to him, takes good shots, doesn't force them up. He's, I mean, he's a great fit with this team. He's a great fit with the starting lineup. 
and it's it's going to be interesting to see when Avery Bradley, I think, is fully back and 100% if Bradley gets put back into the starting lineup or if KCP stays there and they just try and kind of ride the hot hand and maybe if KCP falls off at a certain point, they, they go back to Bradley. But so far, it's KCP. KCP is, like I said, making big plays. He's making big plays, making timely three-point shots, making timely buckets, steals, uh, just doing kind of what is needed from him, and that is that's a huge plus. Like, like I said, that's a huge plus because early in the season he wasn't really given much of anything on the offensive end. I thought he still did a good job defensively when he's not guarding like the bigger wings like a Kawhi Leonard. Guys like that are just a little bit too big for him. But KCP, uh, you know, when he's when he's, he's hitting those open shots and he's just playing good defense, he's creating deflections, you know, creating steals, turnovers, that sort of thing. He's uh he's a big plus for this team. He he absolutely is. So you got to give him credit, man. I, I know I've said it a couple times on this podcast, and 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 I we talked about it a little bit um, on the Lakers Outsiders podcast. I, I recorded with Hani Amadian uh, last week, last Sunday. I'm recording this Sunday night. Um, but KCP, I mean, you got to give that guy a ton of credit because he he's really really struggled to start the season, and he is he's he turned it around. He's turned around. And he's playing some really good basketball, and you know he still kind of has those those moments where you're kind of wondering what's going on, like what's what's with the decision making that, that went into some of the things that he does. But he's 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 played really really well. He's played really well, and as a starter, he's been a different guy, and he's he's been a guy that has made big plays for the Lakers. And I don't think that the Lakers would be twenty four and three, which is their record now, um, without KCP doing a lot of the things that he's done this year. So. Uh, credit to KCP. Also, that Jared Dudley played pretty well in this game before he got um, he got ejected. He got into it, I believe, with uh, Wes Awundu and got tossed. But <clears throat> the big thing with this that I love so much is that Jared D- Jared Dudley will fight for his guys. Uh, you look at the box score. I mean, Jared Dudley had played 21 minutes up to that point, uh, but nine po- he had nine points, uh, two rebounds. Uh, he was a plus 16 on the day. He had three of four. Uh, from the three-point line, three of five overall. Uh, so he shot the ball well from three. He hit some some big threes in this game, especially when Orlando was kind of getting a little close there, um, kind of in the third quarter and so on. But um, before he got tossed, I, I love that. Dwight Howard, you know, took a foul or got fouled, and, you know, there was kind of some pushing and shoving it. And Der- Jared Dudley wasted no time getting in there and was not going to have it. And I think that's so, that's so big for a team. And it's so, it seems like something so little, but having that kind of guy really goes a long way in your locker room. To have that guy that's like, you know, no, we're not going to put up with that. You know, you might try and push us around, but like we, we're going to, we're going to push back. And I think that that really says a lot. And that, you know, that, that moment right there kind of showed me that this Lakers team, man, I mean, teams are going to really resort to whatever they can to try and get under their skin, get them out of their game whatever it is. And Jared Dudley kind of sent a message to me in that moment saying like, that ain't going to work. So you better find something else because like this team, if you're going to hit, we're going to hit back. So I, I love it. That's, that's toughness right there. And Dudley's been in the league a long time. Like he, I, you know, I think he understands like moments like that. And, and uh, I think that sent a pretty clear message that, you know, Lakers, they're not going to get pushed around. They're not going to get pushed around. And, and I love that. I love that from Jared Dudley, he might not be the best on the court at, at this stage of his career. His age, he slowed down a little. You know, he slowed down. He had some moments um, where you know he's, it's been kind of a rough go at times for him on the court. But that moment right there, like that, is why he's on this team. That is veteran leadership, and that's the type of leader that you want in your locker room. Even if it's a guy that isn't leading by example, really on the court in terms of like you know, your star players giving you all star production. You still need those tough role players that are mentally tough, physically tough, um, and everything in between. And Dudley is is that veteran leader. And, man, I loved what he did in that moment. And that should go a long way in that locker room. So, love that. And I love that the Lakers were able to get a win. Um, outscored the, the Magic 27-22 to in the fourth quarter. So, when things got tight, the Lakers still made plays down the stretch. And I know Orlando's not a good team. They're 11-13 and right now. Or, excuse me, they're 11-13. and uh, at the time of this game, but they were uh, eight and four at home coming in. So, I mean, that's a good win. That's a good win. They're, I mean, they're all good wins, but um, anytime you can win on the road in the NBA, you you absolutely take it, even if it's ugly. 
you you got to take it. So, um, all right, going on to the next Florida game. The Lakers, two nights later, were playing at the Miami Heat, and this was a really, really fun game. This was, uh, by the way, I just did want to give credit to the Miami Heat, not only because they're a good basketball team, but that jersey and court combination is just mm, chef's kiss. Perfect. Uh, I love it. I, I don't like wear gear of like other teams, but if I probably were to ever do that, like the Miami like vice uh, color scheme would probably be one of them. Uh, it's just mm, really, really good. So anyways, <laughs> back to the game. This was a really, really fun game. The Lakers, I think, fell down by as many as 14 points in the first half. But they do what this team does. They don't get too far down. You know, I know they've, they've lost three games. The, the Mavs game a couple weeks ago, their last loss, they, they got too far down and weren't able to come back. This game, you know, they just kind of stayed close, kept it within 14, didn't let it get out of control, and they had a big third quarter. Big third quarter, outscored the Miami Heat 37-26. to 26. Uh, It was dead even in the fourth quarter, 25-25. Jimmy Butler missed a three at the buzzer. That uh, would have forced overtime. KCP missed a couple of free throws. Uh, that kind of opened the door for the Heat, but luckily the Lakers kind of get away with it. And they they get it done. They get it done against a very good Miami Heat team that coming into that game was 11-0 at home. And I saw, I don't know how many of you guys are on Twitter, but there was one... Laker hater, I don't even know who he was, but who in the first half was tweeting that the Lakers, oh, of course, the Lakers are struggling against a good team. Go figure, or something like that. And as soon as the Lakers made the comeback, all of a sudden, same person, Miami is not a good team. So Laker haters basically at this point that the Lakers, because they, they kept saying coming into December, oh, wait till December. The Lakers are going to start to lose games because their schedule gets tougher and and all this stuff. They're not. (laughs) They lost the first game in December, and then they just continue to rattle off wins. You know, uh, their their record in December right now, uh, after tonight's win against the Hawks, which we'll talk about in a second, goes to seven and one. Seven and one. They have six games left in December, so the worst they can finish is five hundred in the month of December. And I don't think they're going to lose every game left in December. Uh, Knock on wood. But, no, this Miami game, it, it had a kind of a playoff game feel. There was a lot of energy, a lot of intensity. And you don't, I feel like you don't normally see that out of a Miami crowd. And, of course, whenever the Lakers are in town, the crowd's going to be a little more amped up than normal. But this game had a lot of intensity, had a lot of big plays on both sides of the ball. Miami's a very good team. They're very well coached. Eric Spolster is a hell of a coach. And they've got they've got some talent on that team. I know they were without a couple guys. Goran Dragic didn't play. Justice Winslow didn't play. Um, but they got contributions from other guys, man. Kelly Olenek had 15 points. Uh, Jones had, had 17 points. He was making some good plays. Uh, Kendrick Nunn, 16 points. And Bam Adebayo had kind of some a, a rough go, but ended up with 12 and 12 and 5. Um, Jimmy Butler is still Jimmy Butler. I mean, he's a good, damn good player on both ends of the floor. Uh, made, some, made some big plays. Luckily, he uh, couldn't make the one at the end, um, and the Lakers held on. But... Um, Anthony Davis in this game, I mean, was was really, really good. It's It was another one of those games, and I've noticed this is kind of a trend with AD, that I'll just kind of look, I'll check the box score, and it's just like, when did he get 25 points? Like, he just makes it look so effortless, so easy. He's just so gifted as a player. And defensively continues to make plays. I mean, he contested the Jimmy Butler shot. I know... The last two-minute report said that the Lakers basically got away with two things on the last play. LeBron tried to take a charge before the ball was inbounded as Jimmy Butler was coming to the ball, um, which if they would have called that foul on LeBron, it would have been one shot and the ball for Miami, which could have been a huge play. So luckily that wasn't called. Um, But they also said that Davis fouled Jimmy Butler on the three-point attempt. I disagree with that because Jimmy Butler like went full spread eagle (laughs) as a... you know, he, he, he launched that three-point shot. I mean, he kicked both legs out and uh, tried to draw contact. And honestly, that should be an offensive foul. It should be an offensive foul. And, um, you know, AD kind of kind of flew by a little bit as Jimmy Butler pump fake, but he got back to, to at least bother the shot a little bit and uh, made kind of have forced Jimmy Butler to to miss. 
uh, with the game on the line, so that was that was big. And Anthony Davis just continues to make those clutch defensive plays. But he finished with 33 points and 10 boards in this game. Three blocks was a plus 11, 11 of 20 from the floor, hit four of nine threes, including uh, a very timely three. Um, hit a couple of timely threes there in the second half. So, um, but yeah, hit hit one down the stretch that was was crucial was very very crucial so uh lebron in this game really interesting game from lebron he finished with eight turnovers most of them were in the first half um he really struggled in the first half he was really pressing and really just trying to force things and just looked out of sorts and you don't really see lebron like that very often but lebron is still the type of guy that is so good that he can play probably one of his worst halves that we'll see all year and still finish with 28, 12, 28 points, 12 assists, and 9 boards on 11 of 22 shooting. So 28 points on 22 shots isn't great. It's not terrible. It's not great. But 11 of 22, you'll take 50% and 4 for four for 8 from 3. Um, he's just unbelievable. I mean, to, to be able to play the first half that he did, he was just, I mean, he was awful. He admitted it. Uh, he acknowledged that he was terrible and that his teammates basically just told him, calm down. Just kind of, you know, play your game. And he he calmed down in the second half, and he had a very big second half, and he kind of helped lead the way, helped lead the uh, the comeback, and got a win, helped get a win in his old stomping grounds uh, where he won a couple of titles. But, uh, again, with KCP, guys, 15 points, 6 of 9 shooting. Uh, only hit the 1-3, but, again, he hit just – it seems like he hits very timely threes. Very, very timely threes, and this was certainly no exception. He had four four assists, which is really nice to get a uh, contribution for him uh, from there. Jared Dudley, Jared Dudley had three assists as well. He had uh, two steals. One steal was, was a very timely steal and kind of triggered a break on the other end. Uh, Avery Bradley had 10 points, 5 of 9 shooting. Good to see his his shot start to, to drop again. Uh, Rondo didn't score, but also chipped in with four assists. Uh, he was 0 for 5 from the field, so not a great shooting game from from him. But these guys, man, they just continue to find ways to to get it done. And you know, it's not always pretty. It's not going to be pretty. You play 82 games, you're going to have some ugly games, even as talented as as this Lakers team is. But they're just finding ways to win games. And this is a very good Miami Heat team. A Miami Heat team. I know uh, Luka Doncic got hurt. In the uh, Heat played the next night, actually in I believe it was in Dallas. Yeah, it was in Dallas. So that's kind of quite a trip for a back to back. But um, and they went in and beat Dallas. So just goes to show this this Miami Heat team is very very good. And they were eleven and zero coming in um, at home coming into this this Laker game and caused the Lakers a lot of problems. But the Lakers again finding ways to win games. That's what good teams do. They take care of business against teams that they're supposed to beat, which we saw in all the, all the month of November. Uh, Lakers took care of business against lesser teams, and now in December we're starting to see them beat some better teams and continue to win on the road. That's huge, especially in the playoffs. Even though the Lakers are the one seed right now, um, especially if you have a home court, I guess. If you ever go up 2-0 in a series, if you can get one out of two in the next two and go up 3-0 or 3-1, th- that, those are usually serious clinchers, basically. So... This team's ability to win on the road could be very, very big in the playoffs, and hopefully it's something we continue to see happen because I'm, I'm starting to wonder if they got a legit shot. I don't know what the record is for best uh, home or best away record in the NBA, like in NBA history, but this team feels like they're uh, they're starting to push it. They're starting to push it. I believe they're 14-1 and on the road now after the win tonight uh, against the Hawks, and... Again, they just continue to find ways to win games. They, they're pretty creative at that. And, um, you know, you're not going to hear too many complaints from me. But a lot of Laker fans were a little complaining a little bit tonight. And I, I definitely uh, understand it. Because as fun as the Heat game was, this Hawks game was kind of a nightmare uh, in a lot of ways. The Lakers, I want to say they tried to lose this game. Because it, it certainly kind of seemed like... They were just doing everything that they could to really give this game away, and it was very, very frustrating because the Hawks are such a lesser team. They're six and twenty-one on the season now. Lakers are twenty-four and three after beating the Hawks one hundred one to ninety-six. But again, finding ways to get it done. The Lakers were atrocious from the three-point line tonight, five of thirty-one, and LeBron had four of those. LeBron was four of ten. Rondo had the other one. He was one of four. 
But everybody else, Danny Green, 0 of 5. KCP, 0 of 2. Davis, uh, 0 for 6. Bradley, 0 for 2. Caruso, 0 for 2. So shooting the ball was a struggle tonight, especially from the three-point line. Lakers shot 42.9% from the floor overall, 16% from the three-point line, but still get over 100 points. Uh, Much different game than the first time they played Atlanta where they just took it to them right from the start and just dominated the game. But the the Lakers, again, find a way to get it done. Um, Fourth quarter was, was quite the struggle. I mean, the Lakers... Out, they still outscored Atlanta, but it was 19-18 to 18 in the fourth quarter. And it seemed like every time the Lakers kind of got up by about eight or so, the Hawks would kind of reel them back in a little bit. So I was a little worried that they were le- allowing the Hawks to hang around and you give a young team confidence that they can beat you, then they become very difficult to put away. Um, so hopefully that isn't a habit. You know, we've seen that. We saw that a little bit in, or quite a bit, I guess, in November where the Lakers kind of had a long stretch where they played a lot of bad teams, developed probably some bad habits, and knew they could get away with them. And I just I don't like allowing young teams, especially young bad teams like the Hawks, and it's no disrespect to them. They're very young. They're they're you know rebuilding and all that. They do have some good young talent. Um, but yeah, allowing them to to hang around and just kind of you know start to build confidence and get that belief that hey we can beat these guys. Uh, you're playing a dangerous game there. So it was frustrating that the Lakers could not put them away. LeBron was very good in this game. He had 32 points, 13 boards, 7 assists. He had 3 blocks. Uh, turnovers were better. He had 4. Um, so to clean that up a little bit, he was he led the uh, team in plus minus with plus 10. Um, efficient. Missed a, missed a pretty key free throw down the stretch. And actually got away with kind of falling asleep a little bit on defense. Um Lakers were up three. They were up 99-96, and LeBron kind of helped off the corner, which allowed open open three from the corner. Luckily, Atlanta missed. Lakers secured the rebound, hit, hit a couple of free throws, and put the game away. But um, that's – I mean, I don't mean to take a shot at LeBron. He he was fantastic time. He was the only guy that could hit threes, basically. Rondo hit one. But other than that, I mean, it was, it was LeBron carrying the load from the three-point line, hitting four of them. Um, so yeah, LeBron was really good. Davis uh, still has, you know, again, I didn't think Davis played particularly well in this game. Still had 27 points and 13 boards. So a couple of blocks and a steal. So he um, he just he's a special player, man. Really, really special player that it just seems like he can just fill up a stat sheet and have a game like 27 and 13 pretty effortlessly and not even like playing all that well. So... Special player, the Lakers are very lucky to have have both of them. Rondo kind of stuffed the stat sheet, had 11 points, uh, 7 boards, 5 assists, 2 steals. So he, he had some good moments, and you know I caught some grief on Twitter. My issue with Rondo finishing this game, and I get that he played fairly well. Um, my issue was when LeBron came back in, I thought, okay, he's going to come in for Rondo. Because I think at the time, the Lakers had, around Rondo, they had Danny Green, they had Anthony Davis, Rondo as the third guy, uh, I want to say KCP, and maybe Bradley? No, Dwight Howard. That's who it was. Um, so I thought, okay, let's get LeBron in there for Rondo, because Rondo had been in there for a while. And then we've got, you know, kind of our best defensive players. We've got some shooting in Danny Green, even though he had struggled. He was 0 for 5 from 3. He's still a threat. Teams are still going to guard him. They don't want to leave Danny Green open. Eventually, that's he's going to start hitting him, and it's going to burn you. So, uh, But my issue with, with Rondo being out there is, in crunch time with LeBron and Anthony Davis, is that his, his role on this team is basically, to me, to be that additional playmaker when LeBron's out of the game, right? Be that kind of primary creator when LeBron's out of the game or Davis is out of the game, and just, you know, give... Give some support in the playmaking department. When he's out there with LeBron and Anthony Davis in crunch time, he's not going to see the ball very often because you're going to always have the ball in LeBron or Anthony Davis's hands when it's a three-point game with two minutes left, right? You're not going to give the ball to Rondo in that situation um, unless you're running like a specific set where you're trying to get LeBron on the move, Davis on the move, going, going towards the basket, whatever. But... I mean, it's going to be mostly LeBron and, and AD running the show in those type of situations. So I would have preferred that they had 
an Avery Bradley, an Alex Caruso, you know, somebody that's going to offer more defensive chops than than Rondo, and also guys that won't just kill spacing. Because even though Rondo has shot a very good percentage from the three point line this year, teams still aren't going to guard him out there. They're just not. There's just too many years of statistical evidence and film, basically, to suggest that Rondo's just not a good shooter. He's just He never has really been. I mean, some of the percentages might be okay. Uh, like last year, I think he shot like 33 or 34% from the three-point line. Like That's respectable, but he's also being left wide open. So that's my issue with Rondo finishing this game. And again, I don't mean to take a shot at Rondo. I thought he played pretty well, but I would have preferred to see Alex Caruso or Avery Bradley, somebody that, you know, brings a little more defensively and plays, you know, is a little more comfortable playing off the ball. Because Rondo, I think, is most comfortable with, comfortable with the ball in his hands. So that's just my two cents. Uh, I don't like seeing Caruso's minutes drop because he is so good defensively. Him and KCP together defensively are a really good duo. Really good duo. Um, so I don't like seeing Caruso's minutes drop to 15 minutes. But... You know, the Lakers kind of have to refigure out this this rotation with with Bradley coming back now. Rondo's, but you know, in the lineup, Caruso, KCP, all these guys. Uh, there's a there's basically not enough minutes to go around sometimes. Um, another thing, and I don't like being critical of Vogel. I, I've kind of been critical of him with finishing with Rondo. But with the Lakers struggling from the three point line in this game, they were five of thirty one, like I mentioned. Why not give Quinn Cook or Troy Daniels a few minutes? See if they can kind of get that lid off the basket. Hit a couple threes. Kind of get the team going a little bit. Because shooting, for some whatever reason, with basketball. I grew up playing basketball my whole life. And I've never really understood, I guess, why it is. But shooting just seems to be so contagious. You know, if one guy gets hot, all of a sudden everybody kind of is in a little rhythm and feels like, oh, I can do that too. You know, you see it like with... A game like this where nobody can hit three-point shots except for LeBron. It's like it just kind of trickles down to all, everybody else. You see it, I think, a lot from the free throw line too. When, you know, a couple guys can't seem to make free throws, all of a sudden the rest of the team starts missing free throws. Um, you know, it doesn't happen all the time, but there are times where shooting is, is very contagious. So I would have liked to see, you know, Quinn Cook or Troy Daniels get out there just for a few minutes, kind of see if they could get us going from the three-point line a little bit because the Lakers had a lot of wide-open looks that they just missed. And quite frankly, that kept Atlanta in the game. I know a lot of fans were upset that the Lakers only won this game by by five, but hey, I've said this several times on this podcast, and I'll probably say it several more throughout the season. This is pro sports. There are no style points in pro sports. If you win every single game by one, guess what? You went 82-0. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter that you didn't blow anybody out. All that matters, you're not trying to impress a committee. This isn't the college football playoff where you're trying to get style points and well, we beat this team by this many and this team by this many. It doesn't matter. The the only thing that matters in the end of the day is the Lakers are twenty four and three. They're fourteen and one on the road, and they're first in the West. Tied for the best record in the league with the with the Milwaukee Bucks. So that's all that matters. I know it's ugly. But you're going to have games like this. It's an 82-game season. They're not all going to be pretty. I, They're definitely... I mean, the fact that the Lakers are 24-3, and three, like, that's an unbelievable start. And, like, with this December schedule, is you know, kind of being tougher than the November schedule, and the Lakers just continue to win games, I'm not going to complain about much with this team until they give me reason to do so. So, um, I know it's frustrating. It was an ugly game. You know, I... I can be, you know, I've been critical of this game, and I don't mean to make it sound like I'm complaining because I'm really not. I'm just happy the Lakers got the win. Um, the effort needs to be a little bit better. It seemed like they were kind of sleepwalking a little bit through this game. They were a little flat, but ultimately they got got it done. They found a way to pull out another win and get to 24 and three. And with that, let's talk about these last two games, the road trip. I think it's, you know, coming into this road trip, I thought the Lakers. If they go 3-2 and two or better, I'll consider that a success because I looked at the Miami game, the Indiana game, and the Milwaukee game. It's very, very tough as potentially we could lose all three of those. Those are very tough road games. But the Lakers already got the one in Miami. They've t- taken care of business in Orlando and Atlanta. Even though they're both kind of sloppy games, um, they're wins. 
at the end of the day. Their wins, and the Lakers have won seven straight games. I've made this point before, but I love the fact that after each of the Lakers' three losses this year, they responded with winning streaks. The first one, they reeled off seven straight wins. After the second loss, they reeled off ten straight wins. And now currently, they've won seven straight again. Um, it's going to be very tough in these next two. Luckily, there are no back-to-backs. In the Milwaukee game, I'm very concerned about because, well, one, Davis kind of tweaked his ankle a little bit in this game against Atlanta earlier tonight by the time I'm recording this. Uh, he did say he, he was okay. He was able to finish the game, so hopefully all is good there. Um, just kind of scary to <laughs> ever see him go down because he's so important to this team. But um, seemed like he was okay. Um, but I'm a little concerned about that and the fact that it's the last game of the road trip. Last game of the road trip, that could be very, very tough. And, yeah, but hopefully the guys are they're amped up to play that game and hopefully the Indiana game. Uh, if you guys remember last year, the Lakers just got stomped in Indiana. And they haven't won there in a few years. So, hopefully, you know, they come ready to go. It's kind of an early start time. Um, you know, so... <sighs> I don't know what to expect in these last two games because they're both... Indiana's been red hot. They've really kind of turned it around after a slow start, and they're playing kind of the way they did last year, even without Victor Oladipo back yet. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon's having a hell of a year. Uh, the Bucks, I still... I'm not sure why they didn't... or why they let him go. Um, but, hey, the Bucks are doing just fine too, so... Um, but yeah, Indiana's playing really, really well. Uh, that's going to be a very tough game. And then to do it two nights later at Milwaukee, who's on just an unbelievable win streak right now. And this is a win streak that could really extend if they are able to beat the Lakers. Um, so that's going to be such an exciting matchup. I know I'm kind of, I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm overlooking Indiana. That's going to be a very tough game. But Giannis against Anthony Davis um, or and or LeBron is must-see TV. That is absolutely must-see TV, and I cannot wait for Thursday night. Can't wait for it. I'm excited for it, but got to get through this Indiana game first, but that Milwaukee game, man, that could be an NBA Finals preview. So that's a big one, and after those two road games, I think if the Lakers could get even one of those two, that I'd consider that a win um, because after that, they've got a long stretch or quite a stretch of home games coming up. Um, they, after this road trip, they return and play Denver and then the Clippers on Christmas play at Portland after that. And then they get Dallas who might be without Luka Doncic, uh, because of that ankle injury. He's expected to be out a couple weeks. That was a pretty nasty ankle turn. Um, but yeah, to get the two home games, they play at Portland, who's still struggling. And then they play Dallas, Phoenix, New Orleans, Detroit, and New York all at home. So Really good opportunity to, I mean, the end of this this month is is very tough. Um, but, like I said, coming back home for that many games, I mean, that's kind of another opportunity to start racking up some wins. So, um, yeah, that's going to do it this time, guys. Uh, I'm going to get out of here and get some sleep. Big, uh, I want to say big week coming up for the Lakers with these last two road games. Denver, that's always a big one. Denver, at, you know, near the top of the standings right now, they – Kind of squeak by the the Knicks today, but they're tied for third in the West. Uh, Lakers right now are five up in the loss column. They have are twenty four and three. The Clippers are second at twenty and eight after losing to the Bulls um, the other night. So again, I know it's it's been frustrating, but all that matters is twenty four and three. Hopefully, they just continue to find ways to win games. These next two, uh, or really the next four, uh, next four games, next two on the road. Then two at home, uh, cap or capped off by that Clipper game at home on Christmas. Um, that's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be big. It's gonna be big. So um, big week of games coming up for the Lakers. Hopefully they can uh, continue to win and rack up these these Ws and and create some separation at the the top of the standings in the Western Conference. So all right. I'm actually getting out of here this time. I know I said it once already, but I'm going to get out of here. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. I uh, really appreciate it. I always appreciate the support. And, um, yeah, again, guys, as, as always, be sure to like this video and subscribe to UCAS Studios and Lakers Outsiders on YouTube, iTunes, Podbean, Spotify. 
Um, and be sure to tune in to LakersOutsiders.com for all of our content. And then you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram, just at LakersOutsiders. Like us on Facebook, and you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Kester. That's G-A-R-Y-K-E-S-T-E-R. All right, so I don't know if I will be recording. I want to say I will be recording again before Christmas, but if I don't, I hope you guys all have a great Christmas. Enjoy, spend time with your families, and hopefully we get to watch the, the Lakers beat the Clippers. Um, so just in case I don't record before Christmas, because uh, I will be going out of town to Las Vegas next weekend. Um, so I probably won't be able to record. I might record before then, maybe after that. I don't know. So, um, but if not, have a great Christmas, guys. I appreciate you listening. Appreciate the support. And until next time, this is Gary Kessler with the Lakers Outsiders signing off.